on Larry King now, one of the funniest in the business, Ben Falcone. When I think of comedy, I just think of it like a very real situation and uh, how I would probably bomb in that situation uh, and, then, <laughs> and then write something based on that. You've directed your wife. Yeah. Is that easy, hard, weird? Easy, because she's really good <laughs> and and she wants to try it a couple different ways and like I think we're there for the same reason. Would you ever want to do a drama? Sure, absolutely. Do you want to be in it? Yeah. Ooh, there I've you done go. movies, I love to do movies. Right? I did B-movie with Jerry Seinfeld. Oh, that's right. I was Larry B. King. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, KJM1060 on Twitter. If given the chance, would you and Melissa meet with Sean Spicer? I would. I can't speak for Melissa. I certainly would. All next on Larry King Now. Welcome to Larry King Now, our special guest, Ben Falcone, writer, actor, director, producer, and now author. Ben's comedic brilliance is behind films like Tammy and The Boss. You've also seen him in The Heat and, of course, Bridesmaids. His new comedy series, Nobody's, is in its first season on TV Land, airing Wednesdays at 10 p.m. That wasn't enough. Ben's releasing a new book called Being a Dad is Weird, Lessons in Fatherhood from My Family to Yours which gives us a glimpse at his experience raising two daughters alongside his wife, the hysterical and talented Melissa McCarthy. What do you mean by weird? Um, well, I mean, it's weird. <laughs> it's, I, I walk in to my house and uh, my dog gets cold laser treatments and <laughs> I'm the one who thinks it's weird and my kids are like, oh, it's dad, Gladys likes it. And uh, so it's, or, or they'll start to talk about their anatomy in some way, and I'm like, oh my God, I never thought I was gonna be here <laughs> in the, at this moment. All right. So there's weird moments that you navigate through as a dad. You share lessons in this book. Right? I do, you I do, what I've learned, to I give tips. fathers? I do, I give, give me tips. a couple. Well, uh, one easy one is um, listen to music that you like. You don't have to listen to kids' music. There's no reason to do it. I won't do it. You like Sinatra? Listen to it. Yeah, and then the kids will like Sinatra. My kids love David Bowie. It's like, guess what? That's good. great. Yeah. Do you are you very supportive of them? Yeah, they're great kids. They're very kind and are sweet. They daddy girls. I think they're both. Da they I think they like us both pretty well. Me and Melissa both. Melissa's funnier, uh, and I'm weirder. So that's how we balance each other out. Is Melissa a funny mother in the house? I mean, do the kids laugh? Yes, they do. Yeah, and Melissa's very, very funny. Melissa's also a little bit of the disciplinarian, you know, like no she's kidding. a little more, yeah, she's a little more like, like we should do boss. this, and we should do this, yeah. <laughs> and then, um, but then she'll crack, I'll, you know, we'll all try to get her to crack. Now, the picture on the front is your father and you. Right? That's right. That's my dad, my do pop. You, do you find as you get a little on, you become more like him? to your kids. I sure do, um, in, in every way. Like my dad, um, in general, makes weird noises. He has his whole life. He'll be like, blah, like if no one's around, blah, like, blah. And they're like, what? What are you doing, man? You're crazy. <laughs> and then in the shower, not long ago, I, I'm like, blah, and I'm like, oh, cr crap. <laughs> I'm doing it, you know what I mean? Where'd you grow up? Uh, Southern Illinois, little town called Carbondale. Oh, I know Carbondale. Oh, you do? Southern Illinois University. Right? There you go. Hey. Guys, Larry King knows Carbondale. I love it. Are you a pushover as a dad? Uh, almost. I, I bend, but I don't break. I'm very close to being a pushover. And then right when I'm like, oh, I'll just bail, I, I stand up for something. Do you something. tell stories about your father as well? I do. There's a bunch of stories about my dad, and then it's about how... Like, I grew up, you know, kind of in southern Illinois in the 80s and what it's like now being, you know, for me, raising my kids in, in LA. L.A. in the 2010s, whatever you call it. <laughs> Who do they go to when they want something? Me. Because they know I'm the light touch. And then they're, but, but now they, they do the thing where they ask both and then they go back a third time and a fourth time. Now, at the enormous success of your wife and you and the business, How's that affected fatherhood? Well, uh, we we have to have a good team, you know, because we're busy. We run around a lot, and we have to be very much more organized. And we ever, sometimes we're like, oh, my God, we're so scheduled. But the only way that we can make sure that we see the kids as much as we want to is to be as scheduled as we are. You have a nanny? We do, and we have an amazing nanny named you Sylvia. You have to have an amazing And she's one of the best people ever. So There's a lot of stories and anecdotes. 
Why did you write this? You know, I used to do, uh, I used to kind of roast my dad at like dinners, <laughs> and he liked it. So I would roast him, and uh, then I started writing them all down, and uh, gave it to him as a as a gift and he liked it. I thought he might think, oh, it's too much or this or that. And he actually really, uh, he enjoyed it and was like, oh, why'd you leave that one story out? So I was like, all right. So I wrote that one in. Some of the things, let's discuss a little about some of the things you write. The time you thought you might be gay. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, hypochondriac as a kid. And uh, so I, I thought I uh, was many, could anything could happen? What, I thought I could be gay, not because I uh, thought I liked guys, but because I just thought I might wake up and be different. You oh, know what you I mean? Feared that you. Would... Y yeah, it was just like a. And it, and it by no means should anybody think it means that anything is wrong with you or anything like that. But um, you thought you'd wake up. I thought. Yeah, I thought. Yeah, I thought I could wake up the next day and just <laughs> be a homosexual. And I asked my dad about it, and he was like, "Well, do you like guys? Or do you like girls?" And I said, "Well, I like guys." And he said, "Well, I don't think that really. I mean, I said I like girls." And she goes, "He goes, I don't think that really changes." I go, "Oh, well, that's good." So he gave me like sort of simple, you know, <laughs> advice of how to like surmount. Sometimes it's okay to lie to your kids. When? Uh, when it's just been too much. When, <laughs> <laughs> when, when you, you, when you need it. things to get easier. Any, anybody who says they don't is a liar. Right? I mean, just a, you lie, you little, just little ones to get you through the day. Did you take care of that? Yeah, I took care of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all done. No, we couldn't go uh, no, because uh, the, no, the, the movie theater's not open today. It's not open today. <laughs> Uh, the time you were an asshole for Halloween. I was uh, an asshole for Halloween. I became suddenly uh, really political when I was like 13 years old, and uh, I decided I was going to dress in a suit and I was going to sign it, put a placard on me that said, This is a Republican asshole, <laughs> which, you know, I knew it wasn't nice or right, but I just felt like, oh, I, I you know, maybe the, like Reagan was in office and I, I didn't feel like that was my thing or something. And so being 13, that was uh, what I thought was a cool idea. And my dad actually let me go walk around this giant like Halloween party. And uh, I, no. you know, I did, I didn't get beat up and he didn't get beat up, though I think we, we escaped a few dicey situations. And now people all over America are doing that. <laughs> <laughs> well, people, it's, that's the, that's the level of discourse on both sides anymore, it seems like. <laughs> Next, we'll Discover what's inspired Ben's new comedy series, Nobodies. We're back with Ben Falcone. His new book is Being a Dad is Weird. It is. Great title. Nobody's getting a lot of buzz. It's on TV Land. TV Land, yeah. Uh, they show old shows, don't they? Yeah, they did, and now they're doing their own, uh, you know, original shows, and nobody's one of them. So we're happy to be there. What's it about? It's about three of my real friends in life. They're uh, Larry Dorff, Rachel Ramerson, Hugh Davidson, and they're um, stuck in a job that they feel like isn't very good, which was uh, uh, they're animators. Uh, they're, they write for animated TV, and they think all their friends are going on to do all these amazing things. And uh, so it's really based on their lives. They play the characters they play are the, are themselves. Um, Melissa and I play ourselves, but we play like horrible, monstrous versions of ourselves on the show. Are you all characters? Are they draw characters, right? Are no, they, 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 they're, uh, they're real human selves, and they, uh, they write. They like, write? They write for a show called The Fartlemans, which is a show. The Fartlemans. A horrifying show that they don't want to be on, where they have to write fart jokes all day. And, so and they you just, and Melissa yeah. pay yourselves we as do. what? Um, well, I play a very sort of, uh, you know, I'm uh, dicey and wishy-washy. and Are I'm you needy. a Fartleman? I'm not a Fertilman, no. I, I, I literally play Ben Falcone, and Melissa plays Melissa McCarthy, but she's a monster version. But not a cartoon monster, <laughs> a human. She literally is herself. Who came up with this? Uh, those, the three of them did. They really? pitched me the idea, and they said, we think it would be kind of funny to do a show kind of about ourselves and, you know, all of our friends. The way they, they say it is they say, we felt like one day all of our friends were just buying boats. And we weren't buying boats. And I was like, okay, well, let's go pitch it. And then TV Land was crazy enough to let us do it. And a bunch of our friends got, you know, came to do it. And Are you an exec producer? Yeah. Melissa and I are ex executive producers, so. It's been described uh, by The Hollywood Reporter as bold, quirky, hilarious look at what happens when you do or say anything to succeed in Hollywood. I'll buy that. Is that an extension of your experience? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Uh, it's... These three, they're really funny people, and they, 
they have their own little weird dynamic. You know them all. Oh, right. they're, they've been my friends for 20 years. So it's the, it's literally about their desperation. When is it on? Them. It's on, uh, when is it on? It's on uh, 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock on TV Land. Wednesday yeah. nights. Going to be a hit? I, I hope so. I Do think they so. like it? They like it. Everybody I've talked to likes it. I don't. I don't. You know, follow the rest of that stuff all that closely. But uh, but I know it's a great show, and there's great people on it. Kristen Bell came to do it, and Jason Bateman, and all those oh, guys. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's like a, we like people just come to do it because it's fun. Where do they shoot? We shot in L.A. Here in L.A. Would you describe your type of humor for me? How would how uh, Ben Falcone thinks how? Oh. You're not a stand-up, right? No, no. You're I a comedic uh, actor. Right. Um, I you think produce, it, you direct, you do other things, right? right? So I think when I think of comedy, I just think of it like a very real situation and uh, how I would probably bomb in that situation, uh, and, then, <laughs> and then write something based on that, you know. And and it, when you're writing for Melissa, it's really easy because she's so funny. But people associate with you, don't you? Because you put yourself in her movies. Yeah. And sometimes yeah. in one scene, kissing at the bar. And <laughs> yeah. Well, that was Paul Feig's fault. Um, but yeah, I've been in a bunch of her movies just as a, because it's a lot of times, you know, she travels and we all travel, the whole family. So I'm there. And so the director will oftentimes call me up and say, hey, you're here. Do you want to do this thing? And I'm like, sure. Why not? <laughs> it's like five hours. You How do you two meet? We met at the Groundlings here in L.A. You were both in it? Yeah, we were both in the Groundlings, and we were in a... It's like a school first, so we, were, we met in, like, level three of the school, you know, 20 years ago now. Is that tough to do? A call, they call out things to do, right? And mm -hmm. you do Improv, yeah. Yeah. I think you'd be great at it, but uh, it can be tough for normal I would love mortals. To do it. I bet you'd be great. I would I'm love to. i to set this up. I'm told the two of you do a lot of brainstorming in your car. That's very true. Because it's one of the only places where it's kind of quiet. The girls aren't there. Yeah, if they're in school or something and we kind of drive around. Because if we go to work, you know, there's a lot of people that have questions and stuff. And so sometimes it's just best to get back to our roots, which is when we were, we had nothing else to do. And we'd drive around and try to think of funny ideas to do in a sketch. You, you've directed your wife. Yeah. Is that easy, hard, weird? Easy. Yeah, it's really the easy cause. because she's really good <laughs> and and she wants to try it a couple different ways and like I think we're there for the same reason. I think she's got a lot of skill. She would never say this, but she's got a lot of skills, so I think she doesn't feel all that vulnerable in terms of like, "Oh, would you try this?" cuz sometimes people could be defensive or like, "Why do you want me to try it like that?" The, risk the, the way I, that way wasn't good. It's like I think she knows I already think it's good. Uh, what does she think of the book? I think she really likes it. You know, uh it's 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 a fond look at you know growing up when I was a kid and being a dad now. So I think hopefully everyone comes off fairly well in it. Now Melissa's got a special place. Yeah, well I, you know sometimes I still get a little irritated when I see that it'll say like oh this is a this com comedy featuring women or whatever. And I'm like, well, it's just a comedy. Like, you know, Bad Moms did really well, and there was, a, like, some gender stuff, and it's like, if it was Bad Dads, you know, it just would have been a movie that did well. You know what I mean? Yeah, so sometimes kind of I wish, prejudice. In yeah, it. I wish it was just sort of, it's a funny movie, it's got people in it, and some are female and some are male, right? She is now box office, though, and not many are. Not many people are. Right. Automatic box office today. Well, she does, she does pretty well. I mean, you know... I'll knock on, is this real wood? Yeah, knock has she had this. a failure? <laughs> um, well, I don't know. I mean, we, 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 we don't think about it in terms of the dollars. I mean, I'm sure we could look up and see what movies did the most and did the least. But I, I think it's more like, did you feel like you did the best job you could do? Is it a funny movie? Do you feel good about it? And I think in that regard, she always does her best, so. Spy is great. It's a great movie, isn't it? <laughs> After the break, strange fan encounters, guilty pleasures, and more of a game of You Only Knew with the hilarious Ben Falcone. The book is Being a Dad is Weird. Stay with us. Before we play If You Only Knew, tell me a little about the new film Life of the Party. Oh, Life of the Party. It's when a, does it come out? It comes out Mother's Day of next year. So, of uh, next year? Yes, of next year. We're just <laughs> finishing it now, but it's a really fun, funny, sweet movie. with Who's in it? Uh, Melissa's in it. Melissa plays uh, a mom who goes back to school with her daughter. 
So it's just a simple, you know, and college you are movie. Who? I, <laughs> I'm in it for just a scooch uh, as a, uh, I drive her around in a car. First like hot, a just a hot second. Well, it's a, it's a surprise. I can't give it away. Anything else in the works beyond life of the party? You got so many things bouncing up in the air. No, that's what we got going right now. Would you ever want to do a drama? Sure, absolutely. Do you want to be in it? Yeah. Ooh, there I've you done go. movies. I love to do movies. Right? I've been in 23 movies. That's a lot yeah. of movies. A lot of movies. I've been directed by Mike Nichols and Garvis and Warren Beatty and... Wow. And I also did animate. I did three Shreks. And I did B-Movie with Jerry Seinfeld. Oh, that's right. I was Larry B. King. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we play a little game of If You Only Knew. Oh, by the way, will Melissa ever do a serious movie? Oh, absolutely. She just did one. It's going to come out. It's uh, it's was called Can You Ever Forgive Me? It's like a lovely movie that Marielle Heller directed and uh, should be coming out, I would think, later this year. What's something you're afraid of? Spiders. Biggest Very. risk you ever took? Moving to L.A. with no money. Best piece of advice you ever got? Don't sweat the small stuff. Worst piece of advice you ever got? You got to make it by this day. I mean, you know, you make it, you, you yeah, didn't they, make they it. A date line. Yeah, like a timeline. You, you made it or you didn't. Who would be your dream co-star? Tom Hanks. Superpower you wish you had? Superpower I wish I had? Uh, flight. Let's fly, guys. Uh, childhood celebrity crush? Probably uh, not Lonnie Anderson on WKRP, but the lady, who, Jan Smithers, Bailey Quarters on yeah. WKRP. You loved her. Yeah, like, she's great. Guilty pleasure. Uh, diners, drive-ins, and dives. I've watched every what? episode. Diners, drive-ins, and dives. It's a TV show uh, with Guy Fieri. It's uh, <laughs> it's an amazing show. You should watch it. Can you do impressions? No. Secret talent. Secret talent. Uh, I play the guitar. Okay. Is that a secret? I don't know. Yeah, I guess. Best perk of being a celebrity. <laughs> um. Uh, getting to do something fun every day, you know, like the job is pretty fun. Beats work. Yeah, right? Beats real work. What never fails to make you laugh? Uh, Melissa. And my kids. What are you awful at? Ooh, golf. The worst. What do you think we should be paying more attention to? Education. Strangest fan encounter. Uh, somebody at the airport uh, kept demanding that uh, they, that you know, like, because thought he knew who I was. I, he said, well, what have you been in? And I said, well, you probably remember Bridesmaids. And he goes, no, that's not you. <laughs> that's funny. Person you'd least like to be stranded with on a desert island. Least like to be? Um, any, uh, there... Just the, with the climate, uh, there are many, many politicians I would like to not be hanging out with right now. <laughs> many? Yeah, I think so. Tell me something people don't know about you. Let's don't know about me? <laughs> I'm a pretty open book. Uh, let's see. Um, I'm almost 5'7". Are you what I told you? Don't almost 5'7". Not quite. In shoes, I'm 5'7". With the right shoe. Elizabeth Taylor was 5'3". See? There you go, See, so I'm taller than her. If this is a hit, would you like to do other books? Maybe. In other words, do you like writing? I like writing. I, I, I would have to have an idea, though. I don't have any ideas, so if you want to pitch me some later, I could try to write them. <laughs> what does your good. father think of the book? He loves it. He loves it. He also loves to be the center of attention, so I think he's like, oh my God, this is great. What Tell does more he do stories. for a living? He was a college professor. In our final moments, Ben will take your questions from social media. The book is Being a Dad is Weird. And we'll be right back. We're back with Ben Falcone. His book is Being a Dad is Weird. He's got a lot of things, a lot of balls bouncing in the air. Things are going good for him. Uh, I got to ask you about your wife's uh, transformation into Sean Spicer. How'd that sure. come about? Well, she... Uh they, our friend Kent Sublet is one of the writers over there, and he, she was in New York filming the drama movie, and so he was like, are you in New York? You want to come in and be Sean Spicer? And she was like, 
okay. <laughs> and uh, she was like, I don't think I can look like him, though. And then, you know, she said in a shockingly short amount of time, they were able to transform her into Sean Spicer. <laughs> oh, there's us. Yeah, there's me kissing Spicy. Yeah. <laughs> were you surprised at how well she pulled it off? Uh, I thought it was amazing. And it, so I wasn't there for the first time. I was here in L.A. And then the second time she did, I was there and I watched him do it. And it was just stunning how, how well she transformed into... She says she looks like a combination of uh, Sean Spicer and her dad, which is probably <laughs> true. Are you involved in the sketches at all? No, uh, those the writers are also funny. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll pitch in a couple things just because I'm around. Are you surprised by the incredible appeal it had? I was surprised. I remember when I first watched it, um, uh, I just thought it was so funny, and it made me feel sort of better for a second, just about, I don't know, in some way. And uh, I think maybe that's why it had such an appeal. Like, maybe people were... It, it, things have gotten so um, angry on on every level, yeah. and I think maybe there was just a thing of, like, hey, we can all just laugh at this for it's a It was like the great Saturday Night Lives of the past. Yeah. A brilliant maybe. parody. Yeah, I thought it was really good. They did a great, great job. She did well. We have some social media questions. Abigail Swift on the Larry King Now blog. What's the biggest change you've seen in the comedy industry since you started? Since I started? Um, I do think that uh, comedy's gotten a little maybe less broad. Like, I think the going away from, you know, somebody falling, which, by the way, Slapstick. I love. I love it. But I think people like her. There's so much YouTube out there, and things are based in reality, so I think it's getting maybe running that way a little bit. I like more. Chevy Chase falling uh, down. Isn't he great? It's so funny. Abigail also asked, do you think the digital age has hurt or helped comedy, social media and the like? Everybody's a comic. I think it's just change. I think it's just changing it. I don't, I don't. I think funny people are still funny, and funny things are still funny. I think it's it's made it much more detailed, though. KJM1060 on Twitter. If given the chance, would you and Melissa meet with Sean Spicer? I would. I can't speak for Melissa. I certainly would. At Tammy777 on Twitter, is it hard to transfer what you write into a move? Yeah, um, into a move or into Maybe. a movie? No. You write it and then you've got to play it. Oh, you no. You wrote I, the thing. Yeah, no, I think it's... I think it's uh, that's part of the fun to me. I, I, that's the way I write anymore. Is I don't. I, I kind of imagine like, oh, we're at a table, so I'd like write it to I that. Get it. Rather you're than, in it as you're writing. Yeah, rather than like writing it down and then trying to figure it out later. Corey Anderson on the Larry King Now blog. Could we ever see a bridesmaid too? I don't think so. I don't think they have an idea. Kristen and Annie, the writers, uh, and didn't want to do one unless they had an idea. And to my knowledge, they don't. Uh, Tammy777 on Twitter also asks, is it easy to write, easier to write roles for male or female comedians? Um, equal. It just, it's really easier to write for people when you know who they are. If you know the actor, it's easier to write for them. And Ashley Butner on our show blog, do you think comedy is too, uh, politically correct now? Uh... Depends on the comedy. I mean, I, I think, you know, I think the whole country can sometimes be a little too much, but, and then sometimes there, it's not enough. Like, if something's so, like, it, I think it just depends on who you are and how the piece hits you, you know? Uh, we couldn't do All in the Family today, could we? I don't know that it would get through, would it? It would not be a problem. I don't think so. Ben, great pleasure meeting you. Really nice to meet you. Say hello to the wife. Hi, Mooch. <laughs> Mooch? Yeah, I call her Mooch. <laughs> Being a Dad is Weird is the book by guest Ben Falcone. Be sure to pick a copy of the book. It's Being a Dad is Weird. It's available now. And tune in to his new comedy, Nobodies. It airs Wednesdays, 10 p.m. on TV Land. As always, you can find me on Twitter at King's Things. See you next time. <laughs>